website took off. I had to buy a new server. I had to borrow five hundred dollars from a friend, start a new server, and then that ended up giving me giving me a look. Uh, by fifty, and that's how I got scouted by that. But you just gotta be a self-starter, man. You gotta put something together and have your own business. If you always looking for somebody else to feed you, you're gonna be starving forever. I look at people. I look at people who depend on college and a job like zoo animals. Um, they zoo animals because you can't eat unless the zookeeper come and throw you some steak. Yeah, it's like you take a, a lion from the wild and you bring him into captivity. He has to adjust. But if you take a, a captive lion and throw him out in the wild, he's looking around, where's the zookeeper? Where's the zookeeper? That's what we are when we out here looking for jobs. We the, the lion that's thrown out in the wild looking for the zookeeper. And the zookeeper ain't there, how you gonna eat? You gotta be a wild animal, man. You gotta go hunt. You gotta go get your food on your own. Any questions on money or How much time we got, Dave? Uh, what are we running to? Uh, we're running to eight. Any questions on that piece? Any beefs? What's up? All right. <clears throat> so like the economy, the US dollar gradually losing its value. Okay. What is an alternative for us in the black community can do? Because we can, this is an example that you would like to practice black economics and we'll keep spreading the dollar around, but the dollar losing value is the mean thing. What's up an alternative we can do to promote black economics? That's a good question. What do you mean though? Like what what else can you do? I mean, it was just hard assets. Um, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Commodities. Yes. Yeah, commodities. That's why I always look at rappers and people be like, yo, they buy these gold chains, and I'm like, yo, gold chain ain't really a bad investment. Now, if you're buying fake jewelry, that's a bad investment. You know, but if you're buying diamonds and gold, I think gold just tanked. I think gold, man, a few years ago, gold was at like $2,500 an ounce. I mean, I'm sorry, $1,200 an ounce. Now I think it's like maybe $800. Um, yeah, per ounce, yeah. Maybe it's tinkering. But yeah, commodities is a good. Um, I think the best thing to do is get a Vanguard, a, a Vanguard account. Um, if you listen to the podcast, we brought an investor on. It says you have to break your money up in annuities, commodities, the stocks, the bonds. Um, my brother's girlfriend, she works in hedge fund management. What she told me was that if you put $1,000 in stocks, you're going to put $1,000 in bonds because they normally offset when the stocks go up, the bonds normally drop. So you'll, you'll still have your money safe, you know what I'm saying? Um, so um, that's, that's one thing I heard. Um, I think that we have to start investing overseas in Africa. You know, there's a pan-African group. So there has to be some sort of line of communication with Africa. Um, there's a huge amount of money to be made. When I went over there to Africa, I was the only black man on my flight, and I was shocked. You know, we were coming from Dubai, into Tanzania, Africa. When I got off my plane, it was the Asians. It's like customs. Like, hey, 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 hey. You know, because everybody's trying to get their, their uh, what do you call it, the business visa? So they're trying to help them to get their business visa. So it's like the Chinese in one spot and then the Germans in another spot. And I'm just watching because I'm getting a personal visa. And I'm just watching like, wow, there's none of us here. And all of them are coming down to get that money. And what they do is the Chinese, they'll come in and they'll uh, They'll build a, a hospital, or at the time, what they did was they built a stadium, right? And then they'll say, listen, we're going to build this stadium, we're going to build this hospital, we're going to build this school, but if y'all find some water underneath that land, we got those dibs. And that's the difference between Chinese and, and, and us, even Chinese and Americans, everybody's thinking short term. Chinese think general, generational. You know, they think about what about 100 years from now, 200 years from now. The 1%, that's how they think. That's why white folks are set up now because dudes 200 years ago, you know, in, in Nazi Germany, they were hoarding all this bank money. We're thinking about, you know, how do we control, keep this, this control? That's why they set up that fiat bank. You know what I'm saying? So they were thinking generationally, generationally when they set up the, the fiat uh, currency system. You know what I'm saying? Moving things away from the gold standard. Um, but going back to the point, um, there's crops in Africa that get cheap. And I was working with some white folks out there. The only difference between him and anybody else is he's got balls, though. He wasn't scared. You know what I'm saying? He, he went down there and he spoke to the right people and he was importing moringa. 
and he's getting the moringa. He's getting the moringa for I want to say five dollars a kilogram, and he's putting it on Amazon for uh, forty to fifty dollars. Uh, now, people on the ground have to cultivate this. So, if he's in charge of the cultivation, he's in charge of the wages. So this is how you have slavery pop up, or economic slavery. So they might not pay the people what they should. There's no excuse for why it shouldn't be one of us that's providing jobs for our African people. Not only that, creating an, an economy for them to bring the, the, the crops here so that our people here can eat healthier. Because now, we buy moringa from the white man. It's crazy. The moringa's grown by black folks. It's, it goes to the white man. The white man brings it over here. Then we buy it from the white man instead of just going straight to our people. You know what I mean? Um, I think crops, water, commodities are all great investments. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, land's a great investment. Yeah. Land's a great investment. You got to look at what's on it, though. You know, you don't want to buy swamp land. You want to make sure that it has utilities running to it. Um, you want to get cops in the area. I used to sell mortgages, so you want to make sure that the land is comparable to the other pieces of land in the area. Cops will tell you, it says, you know, this land is, you know, uh, X bid, you know, and then the other comps around it say it's about the same size, comp meets comparable, so it might be 10K, 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 okay, this land is, looks like the other sales for 10K, you know, so you want to just, just study that. I think real estate is huge. Real estate is a big, big opportunity um, to get paid right now. Uh, we had the housing bubble that hit in 2008. It hit before that, hit 2006. I was in the office, I remember the banks closing down, but the housing bubble hit. Uh, the prices of houses tank, so right now it's a buyer's market. Um, you can go out there and you can get yourself a house for twelve dollars. Um, if you go to Chicago, you can get a house for twelve dollars. Detroit, Newark, a lot of different places. By the foreclosures, cash. You know what I mean? And that's why I said, you know, you, you talk about what you gonna put into the college education. I could have took the thirty k. I could have bought a twelve dollar house in Detroit, and flipped it, and made sixty k. <laughs> and then. Not to miss college, because college is good, but you got to think dollars first. You know? Did I answer questions? Yeah. I think, you know, just being Pan-African, you can't be Pan-African and not talk about Africa, but would not create some sort of revenue stream going both ways. So I got a buddy of mine who's setting up uh, in Jamaica. He wants to set up a software company and basically teach the kids down there how to create software. Uh, iPhone apps. This is another thing. I'm glad I brought that up. The, the the phone is the future. Everybody's on this thing. You walk around with it, age on it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like um, this is the most valuable thing known to man right now, outside of time, is the cell phone. Anybody know how much Instagram was sold for? One billion dollars. One billion dollars they sold Instagram for. Instagram was a mistake. The company that created Instagram was working on another app. Some kid picked it up that was popular and it blew up on its own. He ended up selling the app for $100 billion. Uh, Snapchat right now is worth over a billion dollars. Um, uh, what's another iPhone app? Uber. Uber is worth, uh, anybody know what Uber's worth? I want to say like 500 million or something stupid like that. Uh, FanDuel. DraftKings. Um, these companies are valued at $200, 500000000 million. So the reason why I like mobile apps so much is because there's little overhead. Um, overhead is like you know what you got to pay for. So let's say, that's why I don't like selling clothing. I do it, but I don't like it. So when you're dealing with something like shoes, so you have to buy the shoes, right? Now you have to have the shoes stocked. You got to pay for warehousing, right? Some of the shoes might get damaged. You got to take, take that into account. Some of the shoes you might have to give away as promotional items, you got to take that into account. Um, so there's a, a lot of different expenses that come along with that. When we're talking about mobile apps, the only expense is to build the app and maintain the app. You really don't even need any employees as long as you got some dude that can handle putting the app together. So it's cheap. You can get an app in the store for like 30k, right? 15k. You can hire some dudes in India. So what these software companies are doing now is. They'll, let's say you want an app to be built, you know, the new black planet, right? 
I'll charge you 50K to have it built. But I got my slave labor in the Philippines where it's only going to cost me 5K. So I made 45K just off you alone because I have access to the Philippines. And that's what my partner's trying to do right now in Jamaica, you know, because the exchange rate, you know, poverty, blah, 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 is different. So, you know, he can make a huge margin, but at the same time, create some black economy for Jamaica because all the jobs, there's no jobs there. You know what I mean? Um, so these are some of the things that, that are set up. But I, and you want to talk about money? Man, get into mobile apps. Get into the mobile apps. Work on them. Twitter, got on Twitter, is all black, right? All black. We run that app. Every time something happens, Raven Simone, we the ones that make it trend. So it's like all these apps are getting paid off of us, but where are our where are our apps? Uh, Nas, Nas has an app. It's called. Uh, I can't remember, but he's he's invested into a few things. So if you guys have an idea, you want to pitch it as an investor, you know, get at Nas. He has a, a corporation. It's called Robinhood. Uh, little green logo right there. Robinhood is basically uh, you can invest in stocks without a broker. So you guys want to invest in stocks. Nas has an app for us so we can invest in stocks without a broker. But definitely get into apps, man, because they're going to take over our lives if they haven't already. Uh, black unemployment is high because black entrepreneurship is low. What do we always say? We can't get a job. We can't get a job. You asking the same dude who just enslaved your mama to give you something? Oh, man. Let's have the stupidest thing ever, yo. To walk into your oppressor's office, ask for a job, and expect to get it. If a white man were to hire me, I'd be like, oh shit, where is it? different, huh? <laughs> You're different. I like you. We're cool. We can work. You know? Um, but it just sounds crazy to me to, to do that. It, it, it would make more sense if we had jobs that were given out by people that look like us. And the reason why there are no jobs is because we're looking for jobs instead of creating jobs. And they say Obama's supposed to be creating jobs. Obama can't create any jobs. Obama's a puppet for 1%. Obama's good. His money's long. <laughs> um, Hillary Clinton about to be the next president. When she step into office, y'all better step it up, man. It's going to get crazy out here. They're going into Africa. They're going into Africa and they're going to break Africa. Akon just helped them break Africa. Y'all know about the uh, the deal with uh, Akon in Africa with the electricity. They used Akon. Guess who got paid for that? Somebody got paid for that. It's gonna come out. It's gonna come out of Africa's ass. That's where it's gonna come from. He didn't. He didn't donate. All that stuff came from China. And China's gonna want that money at some point. If you know Chinese people, how many of them buy? They know. They not have no friendliness. They don't do anything out of friendliness. Um, any more questions on, on money? I'm, I'm gonna go on to something else in a second. No? Cool. Uh, who has a favorite TV show here? Just say it. Just say it. I watch football. Like I watch football. You watch football. Martin. Martin, I love that show. We had programming like that in years. Who else got another show? You might watch Love and Hip Hop. Scandal. Empire.
So the reason why I brought up TV shows is this. It's something called subconscious and auto-suggestion. Anybody familiar with those terms? Can anybody explain to me what subconscious and auto-suggestion is? Collectively, as a term, I mean, subconscious is what's going on in your mind. Without you actively doing it from a conscious standpoint. Um, what you say? Auto-suggestion. I mean, if it's auto-suggestion, I'm assuming it's something automatic, so your brain is automatically implementing something.